I'll tell you an interesting tension we're seeing right now is this pressure for all of us to create these workplaces that are special and unique. Yes. And we had a really meaty conversation about, I want a workplace that's special and unique as a designer or a design firm or a professional. And sometimes that's bespoke, like I want to make that detail unique. I want that work surface to look a certain way. But how is that a tension with the idea of reusing it later in life? Is it the more special and unique it is, is it harder to find a repurpose for it? I think the answer is yes. <laughs> So we, it leads us to these questions that we, you know, I had the client in one of these conversations ask the team, what percentage of this actually has a chance of being reused? And also easily uh, taken apart, disassembled. You know, I think that's a huge part without a lot of these adhesives that won't allow for the bit different pieces to be, you know, pulled apart. And again, that's one of those things that's a tension on in our industry right now because durability had traditionally kind of gone at odds with deconstruction. Mm -hmm. You know, we see that in, in classroom furniture a lot of times. Like, they don't want people to be able to pick the edge of the work surface. They don't want people to be able to do this. So you make sure those things go together so tight. <laughs> but yes. you still need to figure out how they come apart at the end of their well, life. Well, that's why I actually love the 06, because it was purposely created as a like, simple kit of parts that can easily be disassembled and the backing has no adhesives in it, so. Yeah, if you start with it, it makes it much easier. Yeah. And you can drive the, the thinking all the way through the process to the manufacturing, to the delivery. But you gotta start there. This idea that if you think holistically about the space, things like, well, are there any red listed materials in your product? And it sounds like a pretty straightforward question, except for when you deconstruct office furniture, you're relying all the way back into the chain of who supplied you that caster, right. or where did that caster come from, and what's in that caster. Mm -hmm. And part of that commitment is documenting and understanding what's in our products. Another example of uh, sustainability in a new way that's hitting us right now is there's a high interest in things that are prefabricated yes. or the ability to go to site. Mm -hmm. And so we're fortunate we make demountable walls, products that we prefab efficiently, pack them efficiently, and can bring to a site and assemble efficiently. And it's a hot topic right now, this ability to be able to take a raw space and with almost like modular prefabricated architecture, quickly adapt and change the space. We have one client that calls it the kit of parts and the entire floor plate is built on a grid where the prefabricated architecture is designed in a way that as the needs of the business unit change, they can do metrics around how fast can they rapidly adapt. How can I change the copy room into a two person meeting space? Right. How can I take the private office and make it um, open plan area? And their version of success is, I heard the client, I morphed my kit of parts, I served the client. How much change has to happen to into that? And it's a fascinating metric for us as we think longer term about how spaces morph.